but I've managed to get myself back down my local club lake and I think it's probably a couple of weeks since I was last down here and that was a pretty tough session so you might have seen the video already if you haven't then uh, yeah it was really hard going but I did manage one at the end and it was a nice one as well so it's well worth persevering I think this session might be just as tough it's meant to be absolutely scorching I think it's hitting about 28 degrees both days so I'm not sure how it's going to go but you've got to be in it to win it haven't you so let's give it a go I think the plan of attack basically I forgot water so I need to nip home in a minute and get some more water because uh, with it being as hot as it's going to be I can't really get away without it so first things first I'm going to have a good wander around and see if I can see any fish anywhere there seems to be a couple on the top already it's only 20 past nine now and they're already on the top but I think what I might do if I find a good number of fish is get a bit of bait in and then uh, then nip home get the water and then get it set up in that swim so let's go and have a little wander and see if we can find anything they are fizzing up in there aren't they A lot of fish in this corner again and they're fizzing everywhere. Just over there is where I fished last time and they're still here and they seem to be here in numbers. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven floating, eight, eight floating on the top and then patches of fizzing in multiple places. Now I did really want to fish somewhere different this time but you can't ignore it they're here they're here in numbers so i'm going to get a load of bait along this tree line and between uh this swim and the island because it's literally like a 10 yard chuck so it's got to be done got to be done so i'm going to get bait in this swim and leave the bucket in here dip home quickly there's no one else up here so i can't see it being a problem leaving a bucket and uh and get back down to this swim get myself a little bit sorted and we go through tactics now this video similar to the other vlog sort of style one is uh, is going to be featured around a product and this time it's about Gardner's new range of PVA well not new range because to be honest they're the guys that created PVA in the first place but they've adapted things there's there's a few new products in the range which make your life a little bit easier so we're going to go through the ins and outs of the Gardner PVA uh, once I'm a little bit settled into the swim but I will be using it alongside doing what I'm doing during the session as well so we actually have a bit of a hands-on test with it but for now, let's get some bait in there and uh, yeah, let's get back here as soon as we possibly can. Now I'm actually going to use quite a bit of bait and I know I said previously that I don't think kind of big amounts of bait work, but that's because of the bait boat tactics that are used on here a lot of the time. So I think if I'm just doing boilie over a big spread, then that's going to kind of negate the small patch syndrome that, that might be about. So I'm going to do a big spread over here, which is a bit between the island and, and the bank. And then I'm going to spread it all the way along that tree line as well. And uh, then, yeah, like I say, come back in a little bit. But for now, let's start spreading some of this out. So, I mean, when we're talking about bait boats, we're talking patches of like a foot square. What I want to do is probably about 20 foot square. So I just get them moving about, picking up individual baits. There's a good number of fish in here. There's no reason why this wouldn't work. And it's simple, it's simple fishing, which is what I like. Just straightforward boily fishing. Don't even need a catapult. Even if the fish don't like it, the ducks do. Right, let's get a little bit in along the tree line and then uh, go and get everything round. Once again, it is that time. Well, I'm back to the lake. I managed to get myself round to the swim. I'm not going to lie, it's ridiculously hot. Uh, on the car it was showing about 24 and that's at about half 10 so I'm dreading what it's going to lead to today. It's going 
going to be close to the 30 degree mark, I think, by the time the sun's right out and right above us. Uh, so if I'm honest, I'm not expecting too much to happen during the day, but I am looking forward to getting everything sorted, getting the rods in place and pretty much waiting for that sun to start dipping. So I think first things first, I don't normally do it first, but I think I'm going to get the bivvy up because, I mean, I'm huddled in the shade here at the moment. There's a little bit of shade from this tree just to my left. But as soon as that sun swings around, then, uh, then this little point is going to be very, very warm. So I'm hoping if I can get a shelter up, open the vents, there's a little bit of wind. It might just cool me off a little bit. But uh, yeah, first things first, do that and then sort the rods out. Now I am going to have a little lead about because I'm here for a bit of time. I'm going to put a little bit of bait in, just a couple of handfuls on each spot just to spook them off and uh, then just have a quick lead and just see if anything feels any different whatsoever. I, I think it's just shallow, silty, so I don't think there's anything really to note, but it's worth giving it a, a little go. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get the rods out and then we have a proper look at all the different PVA bits that Gardner have sent through because they've sent me copious amounts. I've got a, a massive box so I've got to make a separate trip back to the car just to get. So loads of PVA to have a look at, all different types and some really cool little bits in there as well. So I, like I say, I will be using them on the session. But to start with, yeah, a bit of lead in about, try and make myself a little bit comfortable and then we'll get into all the products. So it looks like the ducks have found the bait already. Um, not ideal. I'm guessing they're going to be here most of the day. So, I mean, it, like I say, it's getting really, really hot. So I might have to start the day with uh, some zigs out and then move on to these spots overnight. Because to be honest, if, if the ducks are diving like that, then uh, they're going to be putting the fish off as well. And I don't really want the chance of hooking a duck. So I think I'm going to put a couple of zigs out whilst I get myself sorted just under the surface because there are fish cruising about. Okay, so I'm just going to put the first zig out. Got a hook pink of about two foot, maybe two and a half. And that's just got a little bit of black foam and a tiny trimmed down white pop up at the end. And uh, yeah, I'm using the adjustables because that way I can get it exactly where I want it. So you get this first one out. There's fish all over this bay, all on the surface. So yeah, the idea is having it. So the, the little pop up and the foam just comes about a foot under the surface. Uh, not even a foot, sorry, about six inches under. Let's get that out, let it settle, and just make sure it all pops up properly. Let off some line. Right, so there's, there's a hook bait. There we go. Right, so that's separate. The main thing when you are using the adjustables is making sure that your hook bait is separate to the float because they can tangle. There are easier ways of using just a little PVA nugget to keep things a little bit more separate. But if, um, if you're not going far and distance isn't too much of a problem, then uh, you can get away with just pinging it out like a normal zig and then setting it from there. So I'm just gonna put this on the rest and wind this down. So what I'm gonna do is wind it right down until the hook bait just starts to dip. And then you know that you can just bring in six inches, just dip. So just going to pinch the line and bring it back six inches on the spool. Lock that up, get the bobbin on. So there we go. Like I say, that is six inches just under the surface. I'm going to do the same with the other one in a slightly different position and just keep moving them about. I mean, the fish are moving about. Eventually they're going to come across it. It's a little bit like surface fishing when you're so close to the top like that. So it almost feels like the second you put it out somewhere, the fish will show somewhere else. But that's kind of part of it. There seems to be no exact science with zigs. So I'm just going to grab this other rod, get this out there as well. If I can, I want to come a little bit more into the bay because they seem to be showing along the tree line and, and just off it. So. I'm only going to put two out for now because I don't want too many bowstring tight lines going through the swim. Like I say, it's very much just something to try until I get myself sorted and then I can actually get rigs presented properly. Let's make sure that float comes up. There's a float, where's the hook bait? 
coat, head bait, separate to the float. That's perfect because they, they have been showing quite a bit in that area. So I think if I can get this sitting right, then there's every chance it could lead to a fish. What a result that turned out to be. Ziggs had only been out there for an hour or so. Left one just hit the top. Knew it was away with this little stocky. I'm going to get him back quickly because it is so hot. But I just want to show you him very quickly. So I stick him back, get the zig back out. Hopefully, try and have another. There he goes. So right result so early in the session. So hopefully, let the swim settle down a little bit. Get the zig back out, same sort of position because they have been using that area quite a bit today. Hopefully we can have another before, uh, before the evening comes in. Now you have to excuse the mess because I do just want to get this rod back out there as soon as possible. They're still on the top out there. So there's every chance of another bite fairly quickly. I think they don't seem to spook off much from, from having that fish. And uh, yeah, it's a shame it is so hot because like I said, I just wanted to get it back as, as soon as I possibly could. But I'm just going to use the same, same zig that I used last time. Hook's still sharp. Bait's still good, so there's no reason to be changing things, making it more complicated for yourself. So when I um, when I landed that fish, I just I cut the line or bit bit through the line, so it just made it easier than trying to uh, bring in all the zig and a rod and everything attached. So just tying this all back together. So that was on, like I say, just a little cut down yellow pop up, a little bit of black foam. It was literally six inches below the surface. So I was just tying up a few rigs for the night because um, like I said, this is going to be featuring all of the new PVA bits from Gardner. And there's a, a certain bit that I'm really intrigued by. It took, took a little while to get my head round, but now I know the concept of it. I quite fancy trying it on a couple of rods. So my plan for the night, I'm going to use a solid bag and gonna wait for something to show when it gets a bit later in the day. Put a solid bag straight on it and basically have one rod that I can keep moving about on solids because they're nice and easy, nice and quick to tie up, easy to get out there. So that's the plan on one rod. But on the other two rods where I've put the bait, I've got bait to my right between this bank and the island, and then I've got bank all the way down the left, uh, bank, bait all the way down the left hand bank as well. So they're gonna be on uh, fishing conventionally with a little helicopter set up but we're going to do something slightly different that involves these PVA booms. And if you haven't seen these, I think you'd be quite impressed by them. It's basically a length of PVA tubing. Now, what I'm going to do is I've tied up a little rig and I've just got a little bit of shrink tube on it, tiny little pop up, and I'm just going to cut that down so it obviously sinks with the hook. And the benefit of these booms, there's a few benefits, but the way I'm going to use it today is I can use a super, super supple hook link, but not worry about it being tangled. So I'll do it, I'll show you later when I actually put them out, but I can thread this, this PVA boom through, or sorry, thread the rig through the boom, and then just clip it on like I normally would do onto one of my little quick change swivels. And that will keep the shape, even though it's a really supple hook link, you've got absolutely no chance of tangles. Now that could be a massive edge because I'd say 99% of rigs that go out there have stiff booms. So to be able to use a really, really supple boom, obviously that's going to be a benefit, isn't it? If, if there's nothing out there like it. The only, the only time you can get away with using something like this is either stalking in the edge, which obviously it, having a soft, supple boom can be a massive edge in that situation but also solid bags. And I think half the reason that solid bags are so successful is because of the hook link material you use. So if you can use that over a scatter in a bait, then surely it's got to be an edge. So I'm going to carry on with the zigs whilst it's still hot. I haven't got my watch on, took it off the fish, but it's still, it's only two o'clock now. So it's still boiling, it's still uncomfortable and the fish are still on the top. So there's no point switching over to the bottom bait rigs yet, but I'm going to give it a few hours with the zigs. When it comes to about five o'clock, 
then I'll probably start switching things over, getting them ready for the night so they're there and they're prepared. But I'm really looking forward to trying this out. So we will touch on the other bits of the range as well. But I think this is going to be my go-to method for the night alongside a solid bag on a bit of a roving rod. So let's get the zig back out for now. I'm going to carry on, tie up a couple more of these. I've got, got a couple of spares as well. But yeah, let's try and try and get another fish off the uh, off the zig because that seems to be working at the moment. As soon as I put that out and the little yellow pop-up hits the surface, there's rud all over it. Like they're just pouncing on it. So, I mean, surely that's got to work out, work as a form of attraction as well. Surely the carp are going to be inquisitive to see what those rud are going for. Well, the sun's gone in now, but it's still very, very sticky and very warm. I hate to think what it actually is in terms of temperature, but it's got to be mid-20s, if not a bit warmer. Uh, but I thought I'd make up a few bags ready for this evening because I like to have a few made up. So if I do get a bite, if anything happens, I mean, the ducks are diving on, on the right-hand spot at the moment. So if I end up getting picked up by a duck or something, I'd rather have that PVO bag ready to change because you're far more likely, if you've got something prepared, to make that change than to think, I'm sure it's fine. So I'm going to make up a few, but before I do that, I thought I'd run you through the range of bags that Gardner have, have got out at the moment. So there's four, four main sizes to choose from, which aren't these, these four here. So you've got micro, mini, standard, and magnum. So you've got yeah, four different sizes. These all come in uh, packs of 10. So it's quite nice that, I mean, they're ideal for a session. You know, if you're doing a day session somewhere, then You've just got to grab one pack, 10 bags, it should sort you out for that day. So that's your standard bags. There's then a couple of different ones. So they do a slow-mo range of bags and these are basically slightly thicker. Uh, they're not perforated like the other ones are. And the idea of these is that they break down a lot slower. So these are really beneficial if you're using, or if you're fishing deep lakes uh, or in the height of summer when it is really hot like today, then uh, obviously they'd be quite useful because they break down that bit slower. Uh, you've got more chance of uh, actually reaching the bottom on a deeper lake. So really beneficial. I mean, here I'm literally fishing in about two foot, so I'm going to stick to the normal ones for today. Uh, but there's also one other type of bag that they, they produce, and these are the PVA tubes. So they're just a really elongated bag. Uh, so this is really useful if you're fishing with longer rigs, obviously, or if you want to fish with longer rigs, it, this gives you the ability to do so. A lot of the bags, see they're that bit smaller, so it's harder to get a long rig to fit in it and to then present when it melts. So by having the longer tube, then it allows you to do that. So yeah, really good option that. They're ideal if you're kind of bait boating out as well or using a pole or something like that, that you can have that nice long rig all set out. That when it falls to the bottom, it's gonna stay nice and straight. So I think today I'm gonna to go with the mini bags. I think they're about the right sort of size for me. So 105 by 60 millimeter, which seem about right. And there's also a couple of different strings that we come onto in a second. So I'm not gonna bore you with making another PVO bag, because I know you've seen countless videos of myself and Joe making them, but I thought I'd just get one of these out of the packet to show you. So that's, a, that's about a perfect size for the sort of fishing that I do. I only want a little bit of bait. So there's just enough room to get your hook bait in there to get your lead in there and then a little bit of bait as well and uh, yeah it feels it's nice and perforated so obviously the idea is it does break down quickly so even in the depths of winter it's still going to break down nice and quick like i say if you want something to break down slower then you've got the heavy duty bags but that is what i'm going to be using there's also like i say a couple of different types of string so there's a solid pva string which is quite quite thick so there's not loads of stretch in that but it's yeah much thicker so if you're tying down tight knots or something like that then that's really useful or it would be really good for stringers so you don't have to worry about it breaking as you're threading boilies on or anything like that so you've got the solid one or 
get this one out. We've got a braided one as well, which resembles string a lot more than what the solid does. So, I mean, the braided one is what, what I'll be using for solid bags because it would be, I literally just need it to get it out there. I, I'm not casting distances or anything like that. So if I was casting long distances, then I'd probably be using the solid one because it's going to be like, a bit tighter. You can do the knots a bit tighter, but like I say, for what I'm doing today, it's all very minimal. So braided string and just one of the mini normal bags from them. So I'll, uh, yeah, I'm going to make up a few of these. So they're all ready for the evening. It's, uh, it's cut boss free now, so I won't be putting them out for a couple of hours, but I'd rather be prepared and uh, then I'll get the, the other rigs prepared as well and I'll talk you through the, um, the little tubes or the booms because they are a really interesting little bit of kit and yeah, I quite like them. So I'm going to tie some of these up and then I will talk to you about the booms. So this is what's going to be my solid bag rod and I think it hasn't been loads of fish showing, there's still some cruising on the top, but opposite me there's a nice set of pads and Whenever you walk past it, there's always fish in it. There's always fish fizzing around it. So I think for the night, it's a pretty safe bet. Now I've clipped it up, so it's just on the tip of the pads. And I'm just gonna have another cast to make sure, just flip over a little bit, just make sure that it is where I want it to be. Quite a tree's annoying. Yeah, that felt good. Right on the edge of them. As I cast in, the fish rippled amongst the pads as well. So let's bring this back, wrap it out, just so I know for future reference. And hopefully, if I'm catching a fish overnight and I can put it back out there. So, yeah, happy with that. 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 and a third. So, see that sounds quite a long way on a tiny little lake, but that is only based on nine foot wraps. So, it's a nice distance, should be able to get a bag out that far. And I do, I think, to be honest, out of all of them, that's probably the one that will do a bite. So let's get this out there now, 17 and a third. Right, so I've got a couple of bags made up here and all I've done is used a combination of stick mix and tiny tiny pellets, I think they're two mil pellets, and then just a little yellow high-vis wafter. So really simple. Uh, before they go out I will inject a little bit of liquid, but that's them done, they're ready. Now it's actually gone a bit more overcast which is quite nice, the temperature's actually dropped a little bit too, so it feels a lot better, uh, a lot better for a bite. So I think I'm going to start changing my rods over and getting ready for the night. Time is getting on a little bit, just gone five o'clock. So I'd rather get them out there, get them settled, and then know that there's going to be no disturbance for the rest of the evening unless something happens. So the next thing to look at is a really cool bit of kit. Now these are PVA booms. And if I'm honest, I've not really seen anything like it before. And I know I mentioned them briefly earlier, but I've made up a, a couple of really supple rigs, which is what I'm going to be using. Now, it's about a six inch rig, and you can see there just how supple it is. Normally, casting that out, you're going to end up with tangles straight away. So these booms have been created to basically counteract that. They're really easy to use. You can simply thread your hook link through and it's not like tubing where it's a nightmare to thread. So that goes through and then just pokes out the other side. Now instantly, you can see how much stiffer that is. That's not tangling with anything. So you know for a fact that when you put that on, you cast it out, you're gonna be presented exactly that way. So when it hits the bottom, that's gonna kick away from the lead and then the PVA will just dissolve. And then you're using the supplest of hook links that you can possibly get, but you're fishing it effectively. 
So that's going to be really hard for the carp to deal with. I'd say 99% of the time, if you get a pickup from a supple rig, you've got, you've hooked the fish. They're really difficult to deal with because it's really hard for the fish to use their lead against them or anything like that because they are so supple. So that's what I'm going to be using on, two, on the two rods tonight that I've got over the baited areas. Just a tiny little 12 mil wafter and then that's it. Now, if you're careful with it, you can also use a little bit of putty if you need to. So if you want to use a pop up and just pin it down, if you, the, there's a, the diameter is basically big enough that you can use a little bit of putty if you uh, roll it into a fine sort of tube, I guess, it will go through. Now, this one is very slightly too long for what I need, so I'm just going to trim just a tiny bit off the edge, like so, and then that should go through. Have a little bit more poking out. Now, where they're supple, obviously you can just grip your hook link on the inside to make them nice and easy to pass through if you don't have enough hands. And just carry on like that and there you go there's just a little bit more poking out that end which will allow me to put a tail rubber over it so i can just put that on if i show you that now put that on there and you've got enough of your hook link poking out to clip it onto your quick change swivel put the tail rubber back over and then yeah like i say that is not tangling it doesn't matter how far you cast it, how you cast it, what you land in, that's not tangling because the PVA is going to stay there until it's actually settled and then it will start dissolving. So this isn't the only use for, for these booms. I'll just bring it all back out. Now, sometimes if you're using a KD rig or something like that, then a really supple uh, hair can end up spinning around, getting trapped in the, in the hook. So if you cut, just a short length, now I've got a little bit of shrink tube to counteract that, but if you cut just a short length of the boom off, that can then feed all the way down and then that will just counteract that problem. That bait's not moving again until the PVA has melted. So yeah, it's a really nice option there. And the other thing to do, which you can do, is when you've got this threaded through, and I'm gonna put this on because I'm gonna use this now, you thread it all the way through you can actually use these with liquids which is a really cool concept so once i get that through there just find that tail rubber again well anti-tangle sleeve i should call it put that on there we just hook it onto my swivel here So yeah, like I say, you can use these with liquids as well. So you can inject a load of liquid into this PVA, as long as it's PVA friendly liquid. And then as soon as you've cast out, once this then dissolves in the water, you've got a whole tube's worth of liquid around your hook bait. Or like I say, if you're using it just to kind of mask your, your hair so it's not gonna tangle, then you've just got a little amount of liquid right around your hook bait. So that's gonna bring the carp in there's no free offerings to distract them, literally just scent and then you hook bait. So it's a really cool, really cool design. And like I said, I've not seen anything like this before. Now, that's, that's not, that can't tangle. It just can't. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, to getting this out there. But these are very available in three different sizes. So you've got 100 mil, which comes in a pack of 15. You've got the 200 mil, which comes in a little tube like this and you get 10 in the tube or you can get 300 mil as well and again you get 10 in that tube so you can use supple hook links of up to 12 inches that's got to be a massive edge no one's fishing that way the carp won't know how to deal with it so it's worth a go i'm looking forward to tonight i'm pretty sure if something comes over me if i get a pick up that's nailing them so let's get it out there i'll do the other rod as well get them both out there and hopefully and bring a carp or two. Now the last thing to talk about in terms of the PVA is going to be the mesh and there's a few different options. You've got 
the options you're used to, standard and wide mesh, and uh, this comes obviously complete as a kit, where you've got your little plunger, uh, this is a standard one, so it's quite a thin diameter, and uh, yeah, it comes as a complete kit, you get, I think, seven, yeah, seven metres of 25 mil diameter, so really good for uh, all your standard little sticks and that sort of thing, so it's nothing groundbreaking there other than good PVA that you can trust but these next ones are where it gets a little bit more interesting so this is the double barrel system so basically with this it's a kit where you get the standard and the wide both in the same kit so this is actually really cool so you've got a single plunger which has got a different size each end depending on what PVA you're using but tucked inside each other You've got your standard tube and then you've got your wide. So it's really nice that you can have options without having to take multiple tubes. So this basically negates the need for two different tubes like this because you've got everything that you need within one. So why wouldn't you go for something like that? It, it gives you the options. You still get the same amount. You still get seven meters worth. So yeah, bit of a no brainer, but we can take it one step further. And that is the pocket PVA. So that's your normal, or you can downsize to a much more uh, controllable size. Not that PVA can be uncontrollable. Maybe that wasn't the best phrase, uh, but it's a much smaller pack downsize. So it's a lot easier just to chuck in a pocket of a bag than it is something like that. And again, this is still the double system, the double barrel system. So inside you've basically got a shorter plunger, two shorter little tubes, and you still get six meters of PVA on each one. So you get slightly less than you do in the longer one, but six meters of each instead of seven. I think, if I'm honest, I'd take the shorter pack down size. Now this is available in the double barrel system, or you can buy the individual one. So if you find that the wide is too wide for you and you only use the standard one, then you can get the individuals, vice versa. If you only use the wide, then you can get just the wide. So the double barrel is very much a system for people that are fishing different places all the time, using different approaches, then you've got best of both worlds. But if you know that you only use a certain kind of, or a certain diameter of uh, mesh, then obviously, like I say, you can buy the individual ones. But yeah, I thought I'd just show you the, the uh, all the different mesh options, just whilst I've got a bit of dinner cooking. And uh, the rods are out, they're doing, absolutely nothing at the moment and I've just had a pickup from a duck so I think I'm going to redo that right rod because that's the only downside of using such a supple hook link you don't know that it's sitting how it should be after a pickup like that so I'm going to thread another one of the little booms onto it so I'm, I know that it will be fishing but I might wait until the, the, the light levels drop that little bit more and the ducks move off because I don't want to be keep resetting the rods if uh, if the ducks keep diving which they have been most of the day so i might have my food first before redoing that rod by which point it will be starting to get a little bit dark it's just gone eight o'clock now so i think that is the game plan for the night and then uh yeah i think i'll sign out for the night now and in, in, until anything happens if it does if not then we'll have a catch up in the morning and uh see what's happened overnight refills there's also refills each of the refills or each of the sizes have their own refill. You can get the wide refill in seven meters or 20, same as all the others. And there's also a narrow system as well, which is just 15 mil. So again, you can still get seven meters or you can get 20 meters. But yeah, signing out for the night. I'll see you in the morning. Well, it's just gone half five in the morning. And if I look a little bit tired, it's because I haven't slept a wink. Not because I've been hauling. Let's spawn him. So it's been constant liners, constant crashing about, all up against the island, which is 15 yards. <sighs> Let's get the kettle on. So yeah, last night didn't really go to plan. <sighs> it started off badly. Well, not badly. I had a bite. I had a bite about midnight, which was a tench. So got that in, got the rod back out on the spot, managed to obviously get one of these booms back on, it was that rod that went, one just uh, just towards the island, 
or halfway in between and uh, yeah got that back out there not a problem at all and then the rod on the pads went about one o'clock which was the one on the solid bag and something just didn't quite feel right I could feel the fish on and then it just pinged out and then when I brought it back in the the bait was kind of wrapped around a couple of times around the hook and it just it obviously wasn't sitting right in the bag so that one's on me I didn't make the bag well enough which is a bit gutting especially um as soon after that they were crashing about everywhere spawning and yeah I uh yeah like I said I didn't get any sleep whatsoever because if they weren't crashing about spawning then I was just getting constant liners where they were just cruising about looking for places to spawn looking for a, other fish basically so they were they weren't just the odd beef either it was the sort of liners where the bobbin's hitting the top and then slowly dipping back down so yeah there's no no chance of getting any sleep whatsoever so unfortunately i'm gonna to have to cut this session a little bit short i think uh i'm gonna get this coffee down me and then just start packing up and and get myself back home and do a bit of editing today instead of uh spending time here trying to catch fish so it's the way it goes sometimes but i think it's about the fourth time they've spawned this year so it is um kind of mental mentally hot so it's probably not the worst thing not being out in it all day but unfortunately yeah that does cut the video short as well as the session so apologies for that but i hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far and i hope you have uh, found something of interest in the gardener pva range because they've got some cool products some really cool products and you kind of you expect it from Gardner. At the end of the day, they are the originators of PVA and carp fishing. So they're always going to be a little, little bit of a step ahead compared to some other companies. But yeah, I think for me, the standout product is, is these booms. And I'll, I'll definitely be using these going forwards because I do think being able to use a, a supple boom or a supple hook link could be a massive edge, especially when you can use it up to uh, 12 inches if you're using the big one a 12 inch supple hook link that really is no one's doing that no one's fishing that way so yeah to be able to do that and know you're presented it's oh, they're crashing like mad in in all the reeds and everything um but yeah yeah definitely check out the garden range of, of pva you can find out more information on their website apologies again i've had to cut the session a bit short but there's no point sitting it out fishing for spawning fish so thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you guys in the next one 5:49, no sleep someone's got a bite what's going on this is madness anyway time to pack up and uh, probably get a bit of sleep at home